welcome this morning to our service. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. And like the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I hope that's your sentiment also this morning. I hope you're glad to be in the house of the Lord. As we prepare ourselves to worship the Lord, let's prepare our hearts and open our hearts to him that he may minister to us even as we minister to him. Let's pray before we start. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your goodness. Thank you that you're a God who never changes. Thank you that you're a God that we can come to daily. And this morning we come to you with our hearts open wide to worship you, mm -hmm. to lift up your name. And we pray, Lord, that we will also minister to you even as you minister to us. As we begin this service, may you begin with us and may you speak to us this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's hope. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. How are you this morning? You're well. Yes. You're well? Yes. Turn to your left, your right. Wave. Left, right. Say hi. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, my life is a testimony. <laughs> my life is a testimony. Speak it like you believe it. My life is a testimony. My life is a testimony. Jehovah has done something. And it is a marvelous thing. You may not see it, but it's happening. Amen? Amen. So that's the song we want to sing this morning. And this is how we, we sing, eh? Okay? My life is a testimony. Jehovah has done me something. Oh. My life is a testimony. Oh. oh. It is a marvelous thing. Oh. Can you sing with me? Say, my life is a testimony. Jehovah has done me something. My life is a testimony. Oh, it is a marvelous thing. Oh, I want to hear you sing. My life, say, say, my life is a testimony. Like this. 
Oh yes, oh yes. Now listen. There's a reason I am singing. Oh, 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 oh. there is a reason I am dancing. Oh, oh, listen. Oh yes. Counting all of my blessings, naming all of them one by one. Yeah. God is ample to me. Yeah. He's grateful in my see all the way. Say, oh Lord. Oh Lord, I am grateful. You have been faithful. Say, my life is a testimony. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 What can't you do, oh, yeah. Jesus? Yeah. Let's clap to Himself. Yeah. We clap to you, Lord. We clap to you. Says, Create a what can you do? What can you do? What can you do, Jesus? Hey. Name above every name. Name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change? What can you change, Jesus? Two. Clap, clap, clap. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do? What can you do, Jesus? Name above every name. Name above every other name. Say, what can you change? What can you change? What, what can you change, Jesus? Oh, 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 you are able, say, you are able. Creator of the universe 
Absolutely nothing that you cannot do. Absolutely nothing, oh God. It looks ridiculous, oh God. The things that you have said over our lives look ridiculous, especially to those who are not of the faith. But we of the faith, our faith in you grows even stronger. That which you say you will perform, you are not man, that you lie. God, you are faithful. That's who you are. You are a faithful God. And this morning, Lord, all the worship, all the honor, all the praise, who do we lift it to except you, O oh God? Who can be exalted higher than you? None. None on this earth, none in the heavens, none is exalted higher than you. None, O oh King. You alone are worthy of praise. We lift you and we exalt you. Let everything that has breath praise the name of the Lord. We have breath. We choose to praise and bless you. You command us to give a blessing to you, a praise to you. So long as breath comes out of us, we are alive because of you. We are here for your praise and glory. King be exalted. King be lifted. We enthrone you as king in this sanctuary. Who do we lift above you? There is none, O oh God. None above you. None besides you. No one. No one, oh God, you are limitless. You are limitless, oh God. You are limitless, Jesus. We worship and praise you, Adonai. We lift you, Rafa. We lift you, Elohim. We praise you, Ebenezer. You have so many names, Jesus. You are a provider, a redeemer, a deliverer, a foundation, a father. All of them in you, you are the lamb. Same time the lion. Lord, we lift you. Who is like our father? Who is like our God? There is none like you. Oh, we bless you. Oh, we lift you. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We exalt you, Jesus. 
Hakuna kama wewe Yesu. Oh, we we'll lift you, Lord. Oh, we we'll lift you, Lord. Father, we praise you and we worship you. We honor you. We 
exalt you, King. None is like you. None above you. None besides you, King. None is like you, Father. None is like you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. We lift you, Father. We exalt you, King. All the glory belongs to you. All the power belongs to you. All the honor belongs to you. And the Lord during this week told me to read this verse. And maybe this is your message. And if you're here, take it with you. And walk with confidence. Psalms 54, verse 1. The Bible says, Sing, barren woman. You who never bore a child burst into song. Shout for joy, you who are never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge your place, the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth. And remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. That is his name. Do not be humiliated. Do not be ashamed. He will not let you be ashamed. He will not let you be humiliated. That is the Lord to you this morning. Whether you are barren in the womb, hold your womb and speak to it. The Lord will not allow me to be humiliated. If it is barrenness in your business, in your family, whatever situation you are in, this is the word of the Lord to you. Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. The Lord God Almighty is with you. Oh God, who is like you? Who is like you, Jesus? Who is like you, God? Your ways are not our ways. Your wisdom, Lord, you tell us your foolishness is wiser than the wisest man on earth. Your weakness stronger than the strongest man on earth. Who can describe you, God? Who can describe you, Lord? How are your ways, Jesus? No man can fathom. Lord God Almighty, your ways are mighty. Oh, limitless God, boundless God, it is you we gather to worship. Your name is the one we lift in this sanctuary. Not any other name, not the situations the enemy has spoken of our lives. Not that, not the barrenness that is present now, for it will be a thing of the past. Joy is coming. Church, the Lord is telling you, prepare your tents, enlarge your curtains, make them wide, for your blessing is on the way. The Lord has spoken. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you honor, Lord. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I'm on church. Speak to God. Speak to your Father. Friend, the Lord is here. Thank you, Jesus, that you fight our battles for us, oh God. And this battle is not of flesh, oh God, of blood, but it is of the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Thank you, Father, that you are liberating us this morning. Thank you, Father, that you are setting us free, oh God. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. Oh, free from any sickness, free from any disease, free from any financial constraint, free from broken marriages. Oh, set us free, oh God. Set us free this morning, Jesus.
Take your place, be enthroned in this place. This altar is for you that we have raised in this place for your worship, for your honor and glory. Have your way, may your will be done in this sanctuary, in our lives, Jehovah God. Thank you for your word of encouragement and for that which you have spoken, which you will watch to perform. We bless your name and we honor you, King of kings and Lord of lords. My Lord, we pray that as we sit at your feet, May you quicken our hearts and ears to be attentive to you as you speak to us this morning, Jehovah God. We release ourselves totally to you. We surrender ourselves totally to you, King of Kings. Use us as you please and may your will be done in Jesus' mighty name. And may the people of God say it, amen. Give him a shout of praise, somebody. Amen. Let us continue to the worship the Lord with a clap offering. He is good. He is faithful. And there is none like you. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats in his presence. God is good. God is good once again. And all the time. God is good. And that's his nature. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and welcome them this morning into the presence of the Lord. Someone you did not come with, welcome them. Welcome to church this morning. I'm glad that I came to church. Are you glad? Yes. The worship team has brought the presence of the Lord here. Amen. Amen. Let us clap for them. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome those who are fellowshipping with us for the very first time. Any visitor this morning, we'd like to appreciate you. Kindly bear a show of hand. Do we have anyone this morning? All right, it seems that we do not have any visitor. And also those watching us online, if this is your first time, thank you for tuning in to the River of God Church. If you do wish to fellowship with us physically, we are on Ojijo Road, right behind um, Corbill Petrol Station. Yes. Yeah, we 
actually, <laughs> Ruby's registration. <laughs> well, Missy Mimeze, Ruby's. Now, because we do not have anyone who stood, who came walking, I know someone who was carried. And this is their first time here. That's interesting, yes? Yeah. So we usually say we grow by birth and by conversion. Yeah. So today we've grown by birth. And we have baby Valerie Wanjiro, a daughter to Samuel Kongo and Jocelyn, Jocelyn Wodoni at the back. Please stand. <laughs> Let's welcome her. So she's our visitor today. Yeah. So we shall sing the visitor song and welcome her. I like to insist on that song. <laughs> There's a welcome here, there's a welcome here, there's a Christian welcome here. There's a welcome here, there's a welcome here, there's a Christian welcome here. God loves you and I love you and that's the way it should be. God loves you and I've said this before, we are a church that loves to celebrate. Mm. And I take every opportunity there is to celebrate anything at all. So now we are celebrating birthdays. Anyone here who had their birthday from Monday through to today? Wow. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? None. I shall mention a few before we get to celebrate Leah. There's Eva Mwaneki, Kennedy Lukila, Victor Titus, Tiffany Mwangi, and Lillian Kamau. Church, let's celebrate these wonderful people. <laughs> Blessed many more, may you have blessed many more. May you have blessed many more. Blessed many more. May you have blessed many more. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear members. Happy birthday to you, Leah, and to the rest who are not here. We wish you a wonderful year. And may you continue to enjoy the goodness of the Lord in the Amen. land of the living. Amen. 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 Like I told you, it is said when you hear something over and over again, it becomes reality. Yeah. So I like to celebrate. And guess what? There's mm -hmm. something I need to celebrate again. Yeah. So is there anyone who had an anniversary this week? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, madam. Mr. Macquarie is not here. Yeah. And you're lucky to be holding a microphone. Yeah. This is a big <laughs> number you celebrated. So please tell us how many years? 22. Oh. 22 years. Oh. So <laughs> it's 22 years and someone is saying in the year 2022. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Congratulations. Yeah. And may Jesus continue to be the center that holds your marriage. Amen. 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 Now, before we pray, when you came in, you got uh, a flyer on the Kajado mission. Uh, don't read it now, but at the end of the service, you can go to the desk at the back. Jennifer will be there. Oh, sorry, outside. Pastor Beatrice will be there to give you more information on this. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer as we prepare to give our tithes and offerings. And let's pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we come before you this morning to celebrate you, Father, because there is none like you, Almighty Jesus. Lord, worthy is your name. Worthy are you, Lord. 
And Father, this morning we come humbly saying thank you, Lord, that you're God to us, Almighty Father. We come before you thanking you for each and every one of us here this morning. Father, there are many that wanted to see you this day, to see this day, Lord, but they did not make it. Not that we are perfect, Almighty Father, but it is because of your grace, Lord Jesus, and your mercies which are new each and every morning that sustain us, Lord Jesus. And we say thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We cannot say enough, Lord, that you're worthy and that we thank you, Lord. This morning we've declared and decreed that none compares to you, Lord Jesus, and indeed none compares to you. Father, as we come seated to hear your word, we ask that, Lord, you'll quieten our spirits, almighty Father. Whatever form of anything may be distracting us, Lord Jesus, we ask that, Lord, you'll quieten our spirits. There are some of us who come with hearts of thanksgiving and we say, thank you, Lord. Umetenda mema kwetu. Father, there are some who come with heavy, heavy hearts, Almighty Father. Some needs that are spoken and some unspoken, Lord Jesus. Lord, you who is all-knowing, Father, meet them at their point of need, Almighty God. Lord, even as we prepare to give our tithes and offerings, Lord, we cannot outgive you because you're Jehovah Jireh, our provider. That which we give, we give in obedience to your word. We give with cheerful hearts, Almighty Father. And for those who may not be able to partake in that form of worship for one reason or the other, may they know that you're a faithful God. And show yourself strong to them, Almighty Father. Lord, this morning, even those who are celebrating their birthdays, we thank you for each and every one of them. Their brothers, their sisters, their mothers, their daughters, to different people. But we say thank you, Lord, for them. We ask that, Lord, you'll continue to favor them this year, to bless them, Almighty Father. Thank you, Lord, because there is none like you. Be exalted in all the earth, Almighty Father. And in this sanctuary, continue to move. May your presence be with us throughout the service. For in Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. Good morning. And, one... and welcome to the River of God Church. Our vision is to be a life-transforming church that proclaims the kingdom of God. Our mission is to reach people for Christ, refresh believers by the word of God, refine believers for good works, and to release believers to transform the world. With a cheerful heart, it is now time to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. If you would like to use our m services, our pay bill number is 529653, account tithe or offering. Our bank is Standard Chartered, account 01020946989800. Another episode of Thoughts of a Shaken Pastor premieres this evening at 7.30pm on both Reverend Carol Kiamas and the church's YouTube channel and Facebook page. Stay tuned. The men's ministry is requesting all men to stay behind for a brief meeting after the service in regards to the Father's Day service, which is on the 19th of June. On a sad note, we regret to announce the passing of Patricia Mudoni, Nahashon Karanja's sister. We also regret to announce the passing of Francis Mburu, Dr. Simon Gudua's brother. Let us keep these families in prayer. The ladies' ministry will have their monthly breakfast prayer on the 18th of June as from 8 a.m. All ladies are invited. Join us in celebrating Mr. Kennedy and Jennifer Opio on the birth of their twins, Rema Tiffany Opio and Stephanie Neema Opio. Congratulations to the parents. The children's ministry will be going for a mission in Kajiado dubbed Christmas in July. Families and members are encouraged to get involved in the mission we are targeting to get 500 gift boxes. Kindly to drop the boxes as early as possible every Sunday or weekdays at the office. Final drop off is by the 3rd of July. The Youth and Teens Ministry and the Young Adults Ministry will have a mission week, Parklands for Jesus. All the youth, young adults and teens are encouraged to get involved and parents are requested to support them whenever they can. There is a welcome here. To our visitors, we are so glad that you chose to visit with us today. 
We would like to know you better and have fellowship with you. After the service, please proceed to the room marked visitors where our hospitality team will be waiting on you. Let us now welcome Reverend Edgar Lukandu with a sermon. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good all the time. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord uh, and a blessing also to be in his presence. Uh, so if you've been uh, following closely, we've been doing the book of Malachi and uh, Pastor Beatty started off with us by telling us how the accusations that were brought before the children of Israel, how they were loving way and they, uh, they were loving God in a certain way, they doubted God's love. And uh, then Pastor Caro came and told us also about how they offered blemishes, animals who are, that were blemished. And then Pastor Bavon, when he came, he's, he told us how they were being charged, the priests, how they were dishonoring God's name. Reverend Tony also came, and when he was preaching, he told us how they were dishonoring God in their marriages by marrying women that were not in line in accordance to the, word, to the law set aside for them. And uh, last week, Reverend Mutu took us through the injustice that was happening then. So that's the book of Malachi, and uh, several charges have been brought before them, and they stand accused, and then today we are looking at another charge that is brought before them, and so I will request us to rise on our feet as you turn your Bible, if you have your phone, if you have your tablet with you, Turn with me to the book of Malachi chapter 3, and I'll read from verse 6 to 12. Malachi chapter 3, from verse 6 to 12. The Bible says, I, the Lord, do not change, so you all descendants of Jacob are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask... How are we to return? Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nation will call you blessed for you as will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you may minister to our hearts, to our soul, and that your word may take root and that we may live your word, Father God, every day that we are awake. Use me as your mouthpiece, O oh God, and we pray that we may not go back the same way we came. Minister to us and take control over everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can have our seats. Are you glad that the Lord does not change? The Bible says it's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The God of Abraham, the God of creation, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is the still the same God of the New Testament and the God that we serve today. His mercies are new every morning. That's what he says. And uh, that's why we are not consumed, because he's a merciful God. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But because he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, he is the merciful God. And he says he has exalted his word above his name. His mercies are new every morning. We are not consumed because he, has, he is a good God. And he's patient with us. He says, not wanting anyone to perish, but that we should come, all of us, to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So he's patient with us, no matter our shortcomings, so that we may come to know him, we may come to know his mercies, and we may come uh, to know his love for us. So the people of Malachi, the child that they are, it's being brought to them is that they are robbing God. And I titled my message, Holy Robbers. Waizi uh, Watakatifu. These people were churchgoers. They were children of God. They were in the house of God. But God is accusing them of robbing him. And they ask, 
how are we robbing him? How are we robbing you? And God goes on and tells them, by your tithes and offerings. You are not giving it. That's the way you are robbing God. And uh, giving is not a way of God raising money. He says, silver and gold belongs to me. The cattle upon a thousand hills are mine. So he's not short of resources. He's not short of finances. He has everything and he owns everything. So for him telling us to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, it's not that he doesn't have some funding for his work. He just wants our hearts. He wants to, he says, he, he wants to test us, to test us in this. And uh, because he knows our hearts, God knows us. He created our hearts and he created us. And he knows at times we may be alienated to the things that are not uh, holy. He knows that we have tendencies of greediness in us. He knows that we have tendencies of materialistic in us. He knows that we are ungenerous at times. And that's why he tells us, give your tithes and offerings. And he's a good example because he gave his best. John 3.16, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall be saved and not perish. So when he tells us to give, it's not something foreign to him. He gave his son, his only son, the best that he had. He could have given diamonds. He could have given gold. But he chose to give his best, which was much more worth than gold and silver and diamond. And so God is a giver, and he wants us to be like him. He wants us to give. And so when he tells us to give, he's literally telling us, I want you to be like me. I want you to give your best. The way I give, I want you also to give. Because you are in my, you are made you in my image, I want you also to reflect my image in you. I want you to be a giver. And uh, if we are not giving, if we are not tithing and doing all that, we are doing an injustice to the body of Christ. And uh, God is telling us we are robbing him. When you don't give your tithe and offering, it's not that you are not giving. The Bible says you are robbing God. So we ought to be like him. And uh, we may ask ourselves, why all this about giving and everything? Uh, let's look at this. The Bible has 450 verses that talks about faith. 560 verses that talk about prayer. And 2,100 plus verses that talk about giving, possessions, and wealth. So that shows us that if something is repeated again and again and again, it means it must have some importance to us. And that's why it's repeated many times in the Bible. Possessions, wealth, and giving. God emphasizes, emphasizes so much on that because he knows there is a secret in that. There is a blessing in that. And I know giving has been misinterpreted all over in the church circles and uh, people have their own values, have their own views on giving, tithes and offerings, and uh, giving in general. And at times, it also makes people uncomfortable when you talk about giving. We are not a Anisha, but the Bible says, give, because God is a giver. And much of the Bible, as I said, it's full of, uh, Bible talks about, much about money, possessions, and giving, because it's a subject that is close to God's heart. We don't like robbers. Would you welcome a robber in your house? Would you, would you embrace a robber? He's not a good person. And so, if we are not doing that, the Bible says we are robbing God. And at least one chapter in the New Testament, from Matthew to Revelation, talks about giving. That tells us how much God uh, values our giving. And 38, of the 38 parables that Jesus gave, 16 of them talk about wealth, possession, and giving. So there is an emphasis on that. And the, the reason why God emphasizes all about giving, possession, and wealth. Jesus said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. If you have invested in a certain area, you'll put your energy and everything in that particular area. And so God is telling us, 
store all your treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot get them. Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And uh, Paul said, many of us have grieved our hearts, have, have pierced our hearts with grief uh, when pursuing wealth and money. And God is not after our money. God is after our hearts. Because he says, where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. He owns everything, so he doesn't need our money. He doesn't need our, our, our wealth or possession. He needs, he is after our hearts. That's what God is truly uh, after. And uh, just an honest evaluation of your checkbook, how you spend your money. If you take an honest evaluation of how you spend your money, it will tell you where your treasure is and where your heart is. Because the word of God, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, the, word, the Bible says the word of God is there to rebuke, discipline, and also to direct us. And uh, that's what the word of God says. And so if we are not doing it the right way, God will rebuke us. And if we are not, uh, if we don't know how to do it, God will direct us through his word. And that's why it's there for us. Paul will say in the book of Romans that the word that was written, either in the old and even the word that I'm talking right now, was there for us that we may learn from the people who came and went, and also for us to learn and apply it in our lives. And uh, not long ago, SGR, SGR actually comes from Mombasa to, it runs from Mombasa to, what's this place? Siokimau. But news, some time back, news spread that they were to extend the SGR from Siokimau to Busia, not even Naivasha, to Busia. So people were going around buying the land in the designated area where they thought the SGR would pass. And so they went and bought land in Gilgil, everywhere. But so on to them, the SGR only got to Naivasha. And that's it. And I can tell you, what will Panonges Wamaji Hospitali? Because you can imagine the land you bought. It's somewhere you bought a rock, literally a rock and a hill. But now the SGR is not passing through that route. So you have your rock with you and your hill with you, worthless. And some people actually died because of that, the shock and the grief that came with their investment. So that tells us where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And the heart is so important because out of the heart flows the things of life. Everything that we see, adore, and everything comes out of the heart. So where are we storing our treasure? That's why God tells us, bring it to me. Bring your tithes and offerings to me. Where wrath and most cannot get. Because in so doing, I don't really want your money. I want your heart. Because we have people who, Money doesn't mean anything to them. Money doesn't mean anything to them because they have been sold out to Christ and they have surrendered everything uh, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. There's this song that says, I surrender, I surrender all. But some of us have done a remix for that and we say, I surrender this and I don't surrender this. Because there are some things that we hold on to so much and are close to our hearts. But in the end, they will pierce our hearts with grief. And so God wants us to surrender everything to him. And he knows how much money is important to us. You came here because you fueled your car, you paid bus fare. That's how important money is. You will eat today because you have money in your pocket. You will take your, your children to a good school because you have money with you. Money is everywhere, all around us. And so God knows that. And that's why he says, store your treasures with me, what have you invested in? Are you investing in the things of this world or in the things of God? And how do we invest in the things of God? By giving our tithes and offerings. And the reason why God tells us our tithes and offerings because he knows where our treasures are, that's where our hearts will be. And he will protect our hearts. And that's why God is asking them, Return to me, and I will return to you. And they went on and asked, how are we to return to you? And he said, by bringing your full tithe and offerings into the storehouse. 
That means if you are holding back your tithes, if you are holding back your giving, you are, you are literally holding back your heart from God. You are literally holding back your heart from God to take control of it. And remember the heart is very deceitful beyond every measure. And it's only God who knows the heart that can align it to your will. And so if we hold them to ourselves, we are holding our hearts to ourselves so that God may not have his way in us. So if you hold our tithes in the same proportion, we are also holding our hearts from God. And uh, some people may say tithing is legalism. It's all about the law and everything. And we are living in the new dispensation, the New Testament, because the Bible says, and I believe we are not under the law <clears throat> in the New Testament. But remember tithe didn't come uh, during the times of the law. The, 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 the issue of tithing came even before the law. When you look at Genesis chapter 14, when Abraham had gone to fight the kings, and when he came back, he met Melchizedek, the king of Salem, who was the high priest then. And in the New Testament, when you read New Testament in the book of Hebrews chapter 7, the Bible says Melchizedek, is, who is the high priest, is an example of Jesus Christ because the Bible describes him in, Genesis, in Hebrews chapter 7. He who didn't have a mother or a father, the righteous one. And he goes on to say he is the example of Christ. So Abraham gave his tithe to Melchizedek, who is the high priest. And our high priest today is Jesus Christ. And Jesus authenticates that in Matthew chapter 23, when he's accusing uh, the Pharisees. Matthew 23, verse 23, the Bible says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. So he tells them, I know you guys are good givers. You tithe. And they were very good tithers in, in the sense that if they had, let's say, 10 kilograms of rice, they could literally count one, two, three, four. When you get to nine, they would say, this is mine. And the tenth one is for God. So they could count up to the last grain. That's what Jesus is telling them. You tithe up to the mint, cumin, and dill. But you have forgotten about justice, mercy, and faithfulness. And he tells them, you should practice justice, mercy, and faithfulness without forgetting what? Tithing. So Jesus says it's important for us to tithe, but it's also important for us to show mercy, justice, and faithfulness. And uh, I know I may be stoned for saying that about the law and everything, and it's, it's a big debate in the theological circles, but Jesus wants us to give. Jesus wants us to give because it's more blessed, he says, to give than to receive. And, and uh, uh, Proverbs, I think Proverbs says, I've seen a f one folly in, uh, in the land. One man gives and the more blessed is he. And another one holds back what he has and the more he lacks. So it doesn't mean if we give, we will lack. If we give, the Bible says, we shall receive an equal measure shaken together, pressed down, running over. And uh, the Bible says our tithe should be brought into the storehouse. And where is the storehouse? Where we are fed the word of God. And I know we have all these programs on TV and radio programs requiring us to pay, their, to pay tithes and, and, uh, and offerings to them. But where are you fed? Where do you feed the word of God? That is the storehouse that the Lord is talking about. Bring it to him. And in this matter, it is your church, your local church, so that there may be food in my house, the Bible says. And, uh, and at times, the people, those who, who give to that, they may say, I want to see, I want to control where my money goes because I don't trust that pastor, I don't trust wherever I'm giving my money. But God says, uh, it's not all about us. It, we are giving it unto the Lord. Because remember, giving is an act of worship. Do we question God when we worship him and ask him, how, how was it? Did I worship that well? 
How was, how, was, how, was, how was it sounding? Do we question God with that? Because worship is all about God, and giving is all about giving to God. So we don't question, uh, we don't receive a credit for giving. It is God who will reward us. It, when we worship God, it is God who will see our worship and reward us. And the same way, giving is an act of worship. It is God who will look into our giving and reward us. And, and Jesus, I think it was the time of uh, Jesus, Cornelius. Jesus told him, you are giving and your arms have gone before you. Despite the fact that he was not a godly man, his giving and everything attracted the attention of Jesus. And uh, giving is a principle, just like the force of gravity. It doesn't mean if you are a Christian, if you jump from a, from a, from a flat five stories high, if you jump down, you, you won't die because you are a Christian. The force of gravity remains the force of gravity to Christians, to non-Christians, to Hindus, Muslims, and everyone. The force of gravity is the force of gravity. If you jump, you'll go down. And so giving, if you give, you will be blessed. It is a principle. And you can look around for people who give. The more they give, the more blessed they become. And look around for people who don't give. Our nanga took a key too. As much as they are earning good money and they have good, good things, but they don't have it at all. Because they are holding back whatever God has given them. And he says, bring it to me, that there may be food in my storehouse. And remember, we don't get credit for what we give. It's all for the glory of God. And this is the only place, tithing and offerings, that God says, test me in this and see if I will not open up the floods of gates of heaven and pour out so much blessings upon your life. It's the only area that God uh, tells us to test, to test it, to test us, to test him on it. Have you ever felt that maybe your income and everything that you get, it doesn't add up. You get money, yes, but it's blown with the wind. Haggai has an answer to that. He says, we live in big houses, we, we do everything good, but it looks like our pockets have holes because we have been neglected the things of God. We have turned our eyes and our face away from the things of God. And God says, bring it into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, in my house. And uh, there is a French saying that says mbeho mbeho. That means give me, give me. And we Africans have been titled uh, for that particular phrase. It means our hands are always open. And we, we expect everything to be given to us. And that's why some nations are more blessed than us, because they know how to give. And the Bible says they will be blessed because they gave. But for us who receive, it doesn't matter how much you will receive. You will never have enough unless you learn the art of giving. That's when the Bible says you will be blessed. The nations will call you blessed. The nations will call you blessed because of your giving. May we learn that art. May we learn what the word of God tells us about giving. And remember, it's not about us. It's not about where it's going. We are giving it unto the Lord. And he, he says in his word, I will give you back to you. And we should test him in this. And so as I wind up, I just want to challenge us. Where are our hearts? What do you value? If you take a close look at your checkbook, at how you spend your money, at how you spend your resources that the Lord has given you. Where does the bulk of it go? If you take an honest look at that, it will tell you where your treasure is. Because remember, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And he tells, God tells us we should invest in the kingdom, we should invest in the things of God. And investing in these other things is not bad. But remember, the, the, the key thing here is giving unto the Lord tithes and offerings. That there may be food in the house of the Lord. So where are our hearts? Are we robbing God? Are we robbers? It's a child that the Lord is fronting before us. Are we robbing God? Or are we giving 
like the Lord is giving because he's the best giver that we can ever think of. We just examine your heart and we ourselves know our heart. We know where our heart is. We know where, what we treasure most. That which we treasure, that's where our heart is. And may we not be grief, pierced with grief because of investing in the things of this world which are here today and tomorrow they won't be there. May we invest our lives in the things of God. May we invest the blessings God has given us in the things of God. Amen. And may God give a heart of flesh and not a of stone that the word, the moment uh, it's spoken to us. And you know, one deception that the enemy, the, the enemy is a master of deception. You remember what he asked Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Did God really say, and that's my perspective, did God really say that we should do this and this and that? And I know most of us ask ourselves, is tithing and giving offering really important to us? The, the enemy will, will, will make us question the things of the Lord. And without knowing, we will wander off from the things of God by questioning the things of the Lord. That is the work of the enemy. He's a master of deception. May God help us and may God really draw us close to him and may he instruct us with his word in every way of our lives. Father, we thank you. We honor you and we love you. We bless you for your grace, your love, and the blessing that you brought our way. We thank you, Father God, because your word says that we, you don't withhold anything from those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And your word says also, Lord, that those who love you obey your word and follow your commands and instructions of God. And may you teach us to follow your ways. May you put in us hearts of flesh that whenever your word is spoken, it may take root in our lives, that we may actualize it in our lives, that we may live it, and that we may do that which you have, called, that which you have told us to do. May we live in obedience to your word, and may your word be a lamp unto our feet, that it may direct us in ways of righteousness and in ways of truth. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for the many times that we have questioned your word, and we pray that your Holy Spirit of God may illuminate the truth of your word to us in areas that we don't understand, in areas that we can't perceive, we pray that the Holy Spirit of God may shine the truth to us in your own way, O oh Lord. Have your way of our finances. Have your way in our businesses. Have your way at our workplaces. May your favor shine upon your children, O oh God, in their workplaces. Favor them, Jehovah Lord. In their businesses, O oh Lord, favor them, O King of glory. In their families, O oh Lord, May you favor them in their coming in and in, your, in their going out. May you favor them, Jehovah Lord. As you said in your word that you shall bless us in the city and also in the countryside. May that be their portion this, this morning, O oh Lord. May they be blessed in every aspect of their life, Jehovah Lord. May you supply all their needs according to your riches in glory, Father God, because silver and gold belongs to you and uh, everything on this earth also are you as all oh Lord. And there is nothing that you can't do, O oh Lord. There is nothing, O oh Lord, that you can't do for us, O oh God, who are called according to your name and purpose, Jehovah. We bless you and we honor you for your love and your grace and your mercies, which are new every morning. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Let's give our Lord uh, a hand of praise <clears throat> for he alone deserves the glory. So let's rise on our feet even as we Share the word of, of the grace. May the Lord let his saint shine upon you. Let his light shine upon you. And may he be with you in your coming and going. And may your, his favor be upon you in everything that you do. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you and be with you. So the men, please remain behind uh, where... To my left, where...